In 2012, this stormwater basin behind me was constructed to keep the surrounding neighborhoods from flooding during large rain events. It has five artificially constructed ponds and a canal that connects them all. When the environmental engineer and his team built the basin, they planted 18 different species of plants that are native to the area and thrive in the wetland setting. It's been six years since construction and you can now find over 60 different plant species in this basin. So how did so many different plant species find their way in? Well, over the past hundreds of millions of years, plants have evolved many different and unique methods of dispersing their seeds and moving throughout their environment. First, trees and other plants can drop a large and heavy fruit full of seeds from their branches. Some of these fruits, like apples and coconuts, roll away from the parent plant, decompose, drop their seeds, and begin a new plant. Some of the softer fruits can actually open upon impact with the ground and scatter their seeds in the process. These fruits can also be carried away from their parent plant by water or animals, which brings us to our next method. If an animal eats and digests the fruit, the seeds will pass through the animal's digestive tract. Because of the harsh, acidic conditions of the stomach acid, plants have evolved to make seeds with very hard outer coatings or shells. This way, the seeds pass right through the animal's intestines, and the animal drops the seeds out in a nice, fertile poop. Oftentimes, the animal's waste provides a good place for the seed to sprout and begin growing and spreading. Plants that use this strategy have evolved to produce brightly colored fruits that taste very sweet, and the animals love the sweet tasting fruit. Raspberries, grapes, dates, and other berries use this method to attract birds and small rodents who travel long distances. Other plants use animals in a different way to disperse their seeds. These plants have evolved spiny or hooking seeds that it can actually get stuck to an animal's fur, skin, or feathers as they walk through their environment. You've probably had this happen to you if you've ever gone on a long walk or a hike and noticed some plant seeds or debris sticking to your pants or socks. Eventually, these seeds fall off the animal, or your pants, a long distance away from the parent plant. Plants like Trifolium angustifolium, or the narrowleaf crimson clover, use this method. Perhaps the most interesting method of seed dispersal uses the natural process of evaporation to actually burst open a seed pod with an explosion. During hot, sunny days, the side of the seed pod that faces the sun gets warmer and drier than the side in the shade, which builds up pressure that creates a mild explosion or popping and can send seeds flying up to 100 meters away from the parent plant. For example, this tree is actually nicknamed the dynamite tree because of how loudly the fruit explodes when the pressure builds up on the inside. Other plants that use this method include exploding cucumbers and touch-me-nots. You can see how they get their name. Next, many trees and plants simply use the wind to disperse their seeds. Some of these plants have evolved to produce seeds that are so incredibly light that they can fly in the wind and land miles away from the parent plant. Many of the annoying weeds that keep popping up in your garden use this method, like the common dandelion, whose flying seed kind of looks like a Fortnite glider, and the Canadian thistle. Maple trees, on the other hand, don't necessarily have super lightweight seeds, but have evolved wing-like structures that look and act like helicopters when they fall off of the parent tree. These seeds don't fly as easily as a dandelion would, but can still travel great distances, especially if the wind is strong. Lastly, seeds can find their way into rivers, streams, and other bodies of water. Aquatic plants have evolved lighter, more buoyant seeds that can actually stay afloat or stick to the surface of the water for a while. Eventually, the seeds settle in the downstream soil right next to the river or the stream, which is usually why certain plants like willows or foxgloves are actually found near water. Water lilies produce fruits that stay afloat on top of the water for a while, but eventually fall beneath the surface to start a new plant. Coconut and palm trees can travel really long distances in ocean currents and reach new islands or even new continents. The plants that found their way into the basin used a bunch of these methods. Whether they were brought in from the birds, the wind, or by the water, they've successfully spread and established themselves as part of another ecosystem. These evolutionary adaptations help the plant survive reproduce and spread to new areas and for me at least it's always interesting to observe thanks so much for watching